What do you know about the history of the Amazon? In the next 15 minutes, we will blow your mind because history is being rewritten in real time. In a mind-blowing new series of studies, archaeologists and geneticists have identified the rise and fall of an ancient lost civilization in the Ecuadorian Amazon, along with the rapid extinction of the local hunter-gatherer tribes at the same time that this new, advanced farming and urban center was built 2,500 years ago. The Xenu civilization, as it is being called, long overshadowed by the Incas and Maya, is now coming into sharper focus thanks to new archaeological efforts. Excavations in Ecuador's interior region have revealed a society of immense complexity, possibly one of the most advanced pre-Columbian civilizations ever uncovered. But who exactly were the people that built these cities? Where did they come from and what happened to them? Archaeologist Rocio Dominguez has been quoted saying, what we are looking at is the infrastructure of a state-level society that had already mastered engineering on a massive scale. This isn't a haphazard project. It is a well-planned city that emerged from the jungle. But it's not just a city. It's a civilization the size of a country. This is a paradigm shift in our thinking about how extensively people occupied these regions. At its height, this Zenu hydraulic empire covered 8,000 square miles of riverine lowlands. Using canals, dikes, raised fields, and drainage systems, they turned flood-prone wetlands into a productive agricultural zone capable of supporting hundreds of thousands of people. This is not an embellishment. It's directly evidenced in the vast canal networks that still scar the earth from satellite view. The city was built around 2,500 years ago, and people lived there for up to 1,000 years, according to archaeologists. While it's difficult to estimate how many people lived in these connected cities at any one time, at its peak, it could have been home to up to 100,000 people. Other estimates suggest the number could have been in the hundreds of thousands. If true, this would make it comparable with the estimated population of ancient Rome. This discovery has proven there was an equivalent of Rome in Amazonia, the lead researcher said. The people living in these societies weren't semi-nomadic people lost in the rainforest looking for food. They weren't the small tribes of the Amazon we know today. They were highly specialized people, earth movers, engineers, farmers, fishermen, priests, chiefs or kings. It was a stratified society, a specialized society. So there is certainly something of Rome. The authors of the report emphasized the long-overlooked cultural magnitude of the civilization. The Xenu created a riverine empire that rivaled anything in Europe or Asia at the time in terms of sheer land management and complexity. The discovery changes everything we know about the history of people living in the Amazon. The houses and plazas in the lost cities of eastern Ecuador were connected by an astounding network of roads and canals. The area lies in the shadow of a volcano that created rich soils, but also may have led to the destruction of the civilization. Analysis of starch grains from the many decorative and painted vessels found reveal that the area's earliest residents cultivated beans, manioc, sweet potatoes and maize, just as indigenous residents in the area do today. It reveals the existence of a vast and sophisticated civilization, one that may have rivaled or even surpassed the Maya in sheer scale, yet bore no resemblance in its architecture or land use. Imagine unearthing a second great civilization of the Americas, entirely distinct from Mesoamerica, where octagonal and rectangular platforms are laid out with geometric precision, an arrangement unparalleled in South America. Archaeologists describe these findings as truly unique, emphasizing the intricately planned layout and the long, sunken roadways that once connected an expansive network of settlements. These were not isolated communities, but an integrated and highly organized society. Scattered along the verdant coasts of Ecuador and Colombia lie the silent ruins of a vanished world. Buried beneath thick mangrove forests and sugarcane fields are cities that flourished 2,500 years ago. Great mounds, ceremonial platforms, stone-lined plazas, and workshops where gold and platinum were smelted into masks and pendants. These forgotten urban centers spoke of a coastal civilization that seemingly emerged out of nowhere. For decades, Archaeologists puzzled over who built them, where these people came from, and why their culture eventually disappeared. 
but recent breakthroughs in ancient DNA are offering startling answers. Far from being an isolated civilization, the builders of these cities were part of a continental upheaval, a wave of agricultural expansion that swept from Panama through Colombia and down the Pacific coast. Before the rise of the civilization and farmers, the highlands were home to completely different people. These hunter-gatherers lived for millennia in seasonal camps, moving with game herds and harvesting tubers and fruits. Their bones have been found in shelters and rock overhangs. But most importantly, their DNA has been sequenced, and it tells a story of utter disappearance. The hunter-gatherer genome of the highlands, dated between 6,000 and 4,000 years ago, is unique and now extinct. It bears no relation to modern indigenous groups in the region, nor to any contemporary Andean or Amazonian peoples. By around 2,500 years ago, their genome was replaced wholesale by individuals with ancestry linked to Panama and Costa Rica. This means that the people, the hunter-gatherer tribes, did not simply merge with newcomers. They disappeared completely. At the heart of this demographic transformation is a single genome. PAPV-173, recovered from an ancient individual buried in Panama. This genome helps us trace a cultural and biological replacement of earlier peoples, hunter-gatherers who lived in the Colombian highlands and tropical lowlands for millennia before vanishing. What these studies reveal is not a peaceful synthesis of traditions, but rather a conquest, a transition so complete that the original population left no descendants. This is a story of extinction, urbanization, and demographic collapse. The PAPV-173 genome was extracted from a burial site in Panama dated to roughly 1,000 years ago. It is genetically aligned with modern Chibchan-speaking peoples of Panama, Colombia, and Ecuador. These are people of agricultural tradition, coastal settlement, and linguistic complexity, a group historically known to inhabit the Isthmus and the Northern Andes. This genome represents a pivotal node in a population shift that reshaped South America. Around 3,000 to 2,500 years ago, groups carrying this genetic profile began expanding into regions previously occupied by isolated hunter-gatherers. They brought with them crops like maize and manioc, ceramic technology, and the hallmarks of social stratification. Genetic signals from ancient individuals in Colombia and Ecuador now show that these agriculturalists spread rapidly into fertile valleys and estuarine lowlands. Where they arrived, hunter-gatherer populations vanished. This was very likely not a peaceful replacement. Geneticists describe it as a demographic collapse. The extinction of a population without descendants is a rare and profound event, and in this case it coincides exactly with the agriculturalist expansion linked to the Chibchan migrations. The region became a staging ground for a transformation of life, the end of hunting and gathering, the rise of urbanization, and the start of something new. In addition to technological developments leading to civilization and farming, the people of this second migration also brought the Chibchan languages into what is present-day Colombia, and genetic markers linked to people who spoke Chibchan languages first appeared there 2,000 years ago. Once the highlands were colonized, these Chibchan-related peoples turned to the coast. They founded ceremonial cities that would become centers of gold and platinum metallurgy. These cities were built in ecotones, regions where mangroves, rivers, and ocean tides interacted to create fertile trade and farming networks. Farther south arose the Zenu civilization, one of the most advanced water engineering cultures in pre-Columbian America. The Zenu built over 3,000 miles of canals and earthworks, turning swamps into productive fields. They were also renowned goldsmiths, creating intricate nose rings, chest plates, and diadems. La Tolita is perhaps the most famous of these cities. Located in northern Ecuador, near the Colombian border, it was once a vibrant ceremonial hub. Here, the dead were buried with gold masks, jaguar figurines, and shell ornaments. The city had causeways and large mounds made of clay, used for elite residences or ritual platforms. Despite its coastal setting, the society had deep inland connections, exchanging goods with the Andes and Amazon alike. Archaeological and now genetic evidence points to the people of La Tolita as descendants of Panamanian farmers. 
their culture combined tropical agriculture, maritime trade, and a complex belief system involving transformation and animal spirits. But they had risen from the soil of lands once held by a vanished people. Beneath the foundations of their cities lay the ghosts of hunter-gatherers whose bones no longer speak. What makes this transformation so haunting is its subtlety. There are no mass graves, no weapons, no obvious signs of extermination, and yet the result is unmistakable, a complete genetic turnover. In Colombia and Ecuador, this transformation was complete. Hunter-gatherers were unable to compete with settled farming populations. As fields expanded and permanent housing emerged, the foraging way of life vanished. Land use pressure and changing ecology would have driven hunter-gatherers into ever smaller margins until they vanished entirely. The Zenu are certainly descendants of the same Chibchan expansion that included the genomes directly related to the PAPV173 individual from Panama. Their genetic profile aligns with other lowland Colombian groups, and their artistic style shares motifs with the same tradition. But the Zenu were more than regional powers. Incredibly, around 1150 to 1300 AD, the Zenu did something extraordinary. They met the Polynesians. In Polynesia, Modern genetic studies have found South American native DNA, dated to around 800 years ago. That DNA does not come from the Andes. It comes from the northern coast of South America, and it most closely resembles DNA from Xenu peoples. So, the same people who erased hunter-gatherers 2,500 years ago traded with Polynesian visitors who made landfall on their shores. The Polynesians called the sweet potato Kumara, in Quechua, it's Kumar. The name, and the tuba, travelled between continents. And so too did people. Some Zenu crossed the Pacific and had children whose descendants still walk the shores of Polynesian islands today. The story of South America's lost cities is no longer just a mystery of mounds and rounds. It is a genetic and cultural narrative of displacement, erasure, and contact. Around 2,500 years ago, a massive transformation occurred. The old foraging peoples of the highlands and coasts were replaced, completely, by farmers who founded new cities and created new traditions. This replacement was not just cultural, it was biological, it was demographic, and it was permanent. These genomes stands as a symbol of this shift, the first farmer in a wave that would roll down the continent, burying the bones of the past under layers of maize, pottery, and gold. And yet, from this wave arose something more. The descendants of those urban farmers, now masters of the rivers and coasts, reached Polynesia. In either case, the final echo of that long-ago extinction, the silencing of the hunter-gatherers, was the whisper of a Native American voice on a South Pacific island. The Zenu, descended from the Chibchan expansion that replaced hunter-gatherers, may have been among the most sophisticated civilizations in the Americas before the arrival of Europeans. And now, the archaeological evidence catches up to the genetics, a society built by the same people who erased the hunter-gatherers and built cities. The Xenu are not just a postscript in this story. From the vanishing of ancient hunter-gatherers to the flowering of urban society and ultimately to the whisper of Polynesian contact, they carried the torch of a transformative epoch in South American history all the way to Polynesia. But like the hunter-gatherers before them, the Zenu civilization too would vanish. Their cities were lost, their canals filled with jungle, their names lost to history. Only now are we realizing the scale of what was built and what was lost. As Dr. Dominguez put it, it's not just history, it's the memory of an entire continent we are just beginning to rediscover.